Maine. I want to congratulate Ted on Maine and on Candace, and he should do well in Maine because it's very close to Canada, let's face it. I mean... That was Donald Shecky Trump tonight, claiming victory in Louisiana and Kentucky, but Ted Cruz Ted Cruz had big wins yeah. in Maine and Kansas. And I have to say, Louisiana and Kentucky, it was close yeah. for Donald Those Trump. Those were not runaways for not Donald Trump, that's for sure. Let's talk this all over now with Stephen Miller, senior advisor to Donald Trump, top aide to Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. Stephen, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. It's great to be here tonight. Thank you very much. I don't know if you could, Donald Trump can go home tonight saying, though, it was a great night for him. Did Donald Trump underperform today? No, it was a fantastic night. He's won twice as many states as Ted Cruz. He's won virtually every single primary uh, in which he's contested with Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz has done well in a few caucus states. And also with Senator Rubio, Senator Rubio, this is really, it's really historic, and we should focus on this tonight. Senator Rubio has been the donor class favorite ever since pushing Obama's amnesty bill in 2013. Rubio has won zero primaries and one caucus in nearly 20 contests. And now, as we head, I'm in Florida right now, as we're heading into the winner-takes-all 99-delegate contest here in Florida on March 15th, Senator Rubio is falling apart before our very eyes. That's a very significant development tonight and puts Donald Trump in a great position heading into the winner-take-all Florida primary. We'll talk a lot about Marco Rubio in a bit, but let's talk about you. Uh, Ted Cruz won more delegates tonight than Donald Trump. That's just a fact. I mean, so Ted Cruz, if you're doing the delegate math, had a better night than Donald Trump. If you look at Louisiana, Donald Trump won big among early voters, but among voters on actual election day, it looks like Donald Trump lost to Ted Cruz. So why does it seem that late deciding voters are consistently deciding against Donald Trump? Well, you shouldn't discount the fact that the establishment is still powerful, and that's the whole point of being the establishment. So the idea that it's not going to have any effect, that you have all of the donor class and all of the elites and all the power brokers aligned against Donald Trump, of course that will have an impact. But the remarkable thing, the historic thing we should be talking about is the fact that the delegate leader, the man on the way to winning the nomination, the person who's won far and away the most states, has done so fighting the power brokers in Washington, D.C., and the donor class every single step of the way. It is a historic achievement that Donald Trump has taken on the most powerful people in the country who have sent us on the wrong track for years and is now the far and away front runner for the GOP nomination. That is a so, remarkable thing. So, Stephen, what I hear you saying is you agree with what folks think uh, what some folks think that the attacks coming from Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio is having an impact on Donald Trump's numbers. Well, Marco Rubio's attacks are hurting Marco Rubio. I'm not really talking about the attacks from Cruz or Rubio. I'm just saying that it would be foolhardy to suggest in this battle for the soul of the Republican Party that the donor class would have no power, that suddenly overnight the establishment would have no power, that the state party apparatus would have no power, of course they're going to have some kind of power, but I'm saying that to go and be the far and away front runner in spite of all of that means that Donald Trump is speaking to and connecting with the people as no one else in this race has. And again to Rubio, the only person that's been hurt by Rubio's attacks is Marco Rubio. And we cannot overlook the fact that as we head into this next stretch of races in Michigan, in Florida, and in many huge rich primary states, with many delegates at stake, Donald Trump is in a fantastic position. And I cannot stress enough just how badly wounded pro-amnesty Senator Marco Rubio is heading into Florida's primary, which has nearly 100 delegates up for grabs. That's one of the big storylines emerging from tonight, is the unraveling of pro-amnesty donor class favorite Marco Rubio. We got, that, we got that idea when Donald Trump said that Marco Rubio should drop out tonight. So clearly, we understand that that is a theme that your campaign is putting forward. I wonder if we can just shift to policy for a second. You are a foreign policy advisor to Senator Jeff Sessions. Uh, Jeff Sessions has endorsed Donald Trump. Jeff Sessions is now essentially, what, the national chair for foreign policy and national security for Donald Trump's mm -hmm. campaign. Besides Jeff Sessions, can you tell us 
Who else now is part of the foreign policy team for Donald Trump? Give us three names of people he's consulting with on foreign policy. Well, I think that I think we're skipping over the lead there. The lead is is that just on Thursday, Donald Trump appointed U.S. Senator Jeff Sessions to put together a foreign policy team. That's the that's lead. actually not. We that, didn't over, did no, that's not actually. It doesn't seem that that's accurate, though, Stephen, because earlier this earlier this week, Donald Trump said to Morning Joe that. He has the, he has his team in place. He's just not ready to announce it. No, he has a lot of people he's advising with. But I'm saying the new development is that Senator Jeff Sessions, my former boss, has been tasked with putting together a formal team. That's the lead. So the That's team, the point. Jeff okay, Sessions. So the team, Jeff Sessions so the is taking meetings. Together. Jeff Sessions is taking meetings right now with a number of advisors all across the country to put that team together. But we're discounting okay. the fact that the new addition to this is Senator Jeff Sessions. He is the senior foreign policy advisor. And Jeff Sessions is a 20-year veteran of the Armed Services Committee. Jeff Sessions is the chairman of the Strategic Forces Subcommittee. And then, again, if you look at the foreign policy statement that Jeff Sessions made when he received the appointment, and this is one of the other animating things in this race, is that he said that it's time to stop enmeshing this country in conflicts in the Middle East and get out of that region's chaos and adopt a realist foreign policy based on shared interests, not nation building. And that message will resonate all across the country. And it is a sharp contrast with Senator Cruz and Senator Rubio, who've pushed the same interventionist foreign policy that has enmeshed the United States in conflicts in the Middle East that have made us less safe and have made the region less stable. Stephen Miller. Great to have you with us tonight. Congratulations on Kansas, uh, sorry, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on Kentucky and Louisiana. We will see you in Puerto Rico tomorrow. We'll talk about Michigan and Mississippi after that. Thank you, sir. Have a Thanks, great night. Stephen. Thanks. Thank you. All right, a lot to discuss on this, and we're also getting a reaction from the Ted Cruz campaign. That's coming up next, folks. Folks, we are live this evening with special election coverage for you. Stay with us.